Hey yo. Uh sorry. Uh this one is like super late. Uh <laughs> not the only reason was uh this week has been extremely hectic to say the least. Uh we had, you know, the direct, had some personal stuff and yada yada. Uh just didn't really have time to record this. Uh or the video I have sort of brewing in the uh in the background. Uh the that video, by the way, uh, I I guess I can talk about it. It'll it'll be live whenever I finish it. Whenever I finish it, it'll just go live. Um, it's okay. So they announced the Mario Kart DLC, right? And I was working on this video before that, and it's not the most creative video in the world, but it's a Nintendo Kart roster. But what I want from our Nintendo Kart roster, and. I'm I'm sort of limiting myself. Uh, I I took a look at what Mario Kart Eight has, and I was like, you know what, we can't like overdo what that game has already, right? So I went a little uh, conservative on it. I went with 35 characters as like a baseline, um, and that's seven less than what Eight Deluxe has. So I figured that'd be like you know a solid like if they were to make a crossover kart racer, this is what it would be. And and I tried to be very diverse in the games, but I tried to think, okay, I want to be slightly realistic about, you know, how certain franchises would be represented. Uh, in other words, Mario and Pokemon are at the top in terms of how many characters are there. Um, and you'll see the rest of the ro you'll see the roster I chose. And and I think a lot of a lot of them are obviously safe picks, you know, your Mario's, your Luigi's, but uh actually now I'm thinking about it, I might have to redo it. Because I don't think I included Zelda on the roster. Actually, you know what? Let me check. Let me check. Did I did I put Zelda on the roster? Let's see. I sure as shit did. <laughs> How did, how did I, how did I forget Zelda? Yeah, I didn't put anything Zelda related. Yeah, I put Mario, I put, you know, like other stuff, but like, I, you know, I said Pokemon earlier. I didn't put not a single goddamn Zelda characters on this list. Oops. Uh, guess who has to redo it? <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, I'm gonna make some uh, changes to this one. This, uh, this is, uh, boy howdy. This is rough. And that's the thing, I think I have, other than Zelda being missing, which is a big one, I feel like I have a pretty balanced roster, honestly. Like, like I got, you know, the big IP in there. Just not Zelda, I guess. Oops. I guess then, if... Because I'm going to post this right after I'm done talking. But if you have ideas for Zelda characters, right? <laughs> just let me know, right? But uh, I, I I guess I, I can stop talking about it now. Because I'm sure no one cares about it right now. Because, like, we've all talked about it. Like, Nintendo Kart or whatever. And I know some people don't want it. And I get it. But, like... I don't know, like, I I would like a crossover game that isn't just fighting, you know? Like, I, I love kart racers, but I'm, not that I'm sick of Mario Kart 8, but, like, come on, we've been playing Mario Kart 8 for a while, and Deluxe is better, and then the DLC for Deluxe is even nicer, but, like, I, I would like something else, you know? And, me like, a, a different twist to kart racing from Nintendo would be nice. They... They've had Diddy Kong, they've had F-Zero, they've had Kirby, like, they've had other racing games, but for the Switch, they're like, this is the one racing game we want, and it's like, I get it, because it sells a billion copies every three seconds, but, you know, it, it I, I'd, I'd want something else, you know, and, the, and with, I feel like with kart racers, you're excited about the crossover, like, like, that's cool, right? But the real kicker is the tracks, right? The tracks are a big part of kart racers, much more than who you're playing as, right? If you were to swap out Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with whatever, you would still have a 
just a great kart racing game regardless of if Mario is attached to it, right? Mario just adds that extra pizzazz to it, right? So that's kind of where I'm coming at. I'm going to be doing the roster. You know what? I might as well do might as well do characters uh like like the the char- not just the characters but like the tracks too. I'll I'll do Okay, if we were to do like a roster of 40 to bring it still under Mario Kart 8 Deluxe but just barely. Uh what what would be like a good amount of tracks for that? Because Mario Kart Eight, what did Mario Kart Eight have? Like eight cups when it launched, and then it got four more via DL, four more via TLC. Yeah, that that was. I feel like you know, forty eight cups. Yeah, forty eight. No wait, it wouldn't be forty eight because that includes the the four extra cups we got, right? So in that case, it would have been 32. I feel like 32, that could be like a good, that could be a good way to like get not just IP that are already in the game, like Mario and Pokemon, right? But like you could start repping some series that wouldn't be good for racing. Like, like maybe you get a Star Tropics racetrack in there, right? Like you only have one character from Star Tropics, let's be real. It's Mike Jones, but like, I don't know, you, you drive around like an island. Or something like that. It's like a beach setting. It has like, you know, references to the game and stuff like that. Like maybe you see a Rob the Robot in there somewhere. Like a like you do in F Zero, right? Like there's a giant Rob in one of the tracks, right? Like that'd be cool, right? I don't know. Like I, I feel like with the the tracks are where you could really do the crossover. Because if you were to get the right games in racing format, you could have a really excellent like set of tracks that Mario Kart just couldn't do, right? Or I guess could do, but like it it'd be weird if there was like like a Fire Emblem War type of track for Mario, you know? And I I guess, you know, Mario has like Bowser's Castle which has, you know, flames and darkness and whatever, right? But like something uniquely Fire Emblem, like I don't think has been done similarly in a Mario Kart game. So I, I you know, stuff like that would be cool to see, right? Um and I'm not gonna spoil any of the roster here. Like I, I, I get. I told you two franchises. I guess three with Zelda now because I have to go back and do it again. Um, but oh, overall, I'm having fun making it. It's just been very difficult because I want to balance it in a way that would please me, please others, and like pseudo realistic. Like I'm not. I'm not gonna try and be like other rosters where it's just like. Where's Tatanga from Mario Land? And it's like, bro, they're not... He hasn't been back. He's not gonna be back. Like, the only time they brought fucking Wart back was the Link's Awakening remake, and he was already in the game. He's not even called Wart anymore. Well, I mean, he wasn't to begin with, but in Awakening, but you get what I mean, right? But, like, they, they don't enjoy referencing, like, one-off characters. Like, like, back then, Mario was still super young, so they were able to do weird out there stuff but nowadays it's like if bowser's not the baddie he's it's not a mario like it's just a different game entirely right uh but yeah i've been having fun making this uh i guess i'm gonna be going back and making more (laughs) i guess i could just bump it up to 40 characters it'd still be less right so uh, i guess i can talk about uh my thoughts on the uh what is it? Uh, the direct. Uh, let's see. I'll pull that up real quick. Okay, so we had. Oh God. Okay, so the the Metroid Dread update, like, it's not gonna get me to come back to the game, because it's just difficulties and boss rush, um, in two separate updates. But like, it it's so cool that like even the demo is getting updated with like a rookie mode and a dread mode, and that's super cool for people who love just replaying the same game over and over again but like it takes a very special game for me to want to replay it over and over again and you know with how many games are coming out i'm just gonna cool if they do a significant dlc i'll replay the game but i'm good with just that was like a cool thing right uh and and i do want to mention mlb the show like okay we all know on switch it looks bad 
Like, it, it just looks bad. Let's be real. But super cool of them to have, like, cross-progression with other consoles. Like, you can play your, your PlayStation, Xbox version, and then your save carries over to the Switch version. Like, that's super dope. Uh, and I'm really glad they're doing that. Because, like, the MLB, they wouldn't keep making these games if they weren't selling, right? You know what I mean? Like, so, like, clearly people are buying these. And, you know, there's going to be someone out there who's, like, you know, chilling on it the train or whatever and he's like god i you know like i i wanted to play a bit more of you know this or that on mlb and like now they can and that's cool so good for them not buying it though uh i'm not i no interest in like i barely had interest in the mario baseball games i didn't buy either of them uh, i those were like rental games or i played them at a friend's house or whatever so like even when you have like more cartoony gimmicky baseball games i'm not that's like not my jam right uh, and then, uh, okay, so I, I talked about it already. The Mario Kart DLC looks great. Um, well, looks great is subjective. It looks like a great value. <laughs> so I'm glad I have the expansion pack or whatever it's called. Dog, don't, dog's just going nuts upstairs. Uh, he probably, oh, someone's probably home and that's fine. I'm going to have to explain to them here in a second that I'm recording something. So, um, the DLC looks great. I'm glad I have the expansion pack. That's super cool. Uh, and then, uh, Chrono Cross, I'm not going to get it if only because I didn't like Trigger. And I know Cross is different, like very different in terms of like how it's a game, but like, I don't like the having a ton of different characters and which ones you have determine your ending kind of thing. It's just not... It's not something I'm interested in, but it comes with Radical Dreamers, which is super dope. And it's like 20 bucks, right? Like Chrono Cross and Radical Dreamers, super tight. Uh, for those that don't know, Radical Dreamers was a Japanese only like Satellaview game on the SNES. It was a prequel to Cross and it just never came out. I think there've been tra fan translations, but like this is the first official release, which is dope. Uh, and something they only announced after the direct. Chrono Cross gets two different font choices, and I wonder if that's because of their reaction to the Pixel remasters. Like, they were like, oh, God, guys, we still got this Cross thing in development. We better add a font in there that doesn't make them mad at us again. But, you know, that 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 was funny to see. So I'm glad we have classic font, new font. And the, like, Chrono Cross itself, it has, like, new models. Like, I saw some side-by-sides. Like, the new models are, like, they're almost like PSP models now. They're not the PS1 versions updated. They're like clearly enhanced like Final Fantasy VIII was. And that's super cool to see. So I'm glad they're like actually touching it up. Whether it looks better or not is up to you. But like, it, I think it looks good. And I'm happy for Chrono fans. Uh, kind of weird. You didn't just tack on Trigger and just call it the Chrono Collection. Um, where it's... Trigger, Cross, and Radical Dreamers all in one bundle. Like, that. I mean, you literally have Chrono Trigger on PC just sitting there, you know, probably could use a good port every so often, you know, cough, cough. But they know they could probably sell that game on its own for 20 bucks because people will buy that. Trigger is the beloved one. Cr Cross is like the, the one we don't talk about. <laughs> not that it's bad. I, I know people love it, but I'm just saying, like, that's the that's not the popular one. Uh, what else did they have? Oh, the new Strikers game looks so sick. And I'm glad, like, someone put a clip on Twitter of, like, Mario drop kicking Luigi into an electric fence. And I was like, that's the shit I want. That's the shit I want. Like, I, I know we all make the joke, the, well, Luigi, wah, like, the crotch chop, and it's funny. But, like, I, I love the hilariously violent, for no reason, Mario stuff. And that drop kicking Luigi into an electric fence is up there for me. Um, so that's, that's number one. I have a hair in my mouth and it's driving me nuts. Um, and then they, had, they showed off two point campus, uh, and on switch, it looks fine, but like, it's going to be on game pass. So I can get it on PC or Xbox and not have to pay money. And it doesn't run badly. Granted, it's not portable anymore. And that's the benefit of the switch version. Right. But like, I barely play portable games on switch. 
So I'm just going to get it on Xbox. But that, that game looks sick because just like a month or two ago, I was looking for uh, School Tycoon, which was a old, like, maybe mid-2000s, I want to say, uh, PC game. It was literally just Roller Coaster Tycoon, but with, like, high school, I think. Maybe college? I, it was, like, one of those two. It was really old. Um, but uh, there's no modern release of that game. And I was like, God, that, that sucks, man. And two weeks later, they announced two, like, a different company announces Two Point Campus. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> I got what I wanted! <laughs> kind of. But yeah, that looks exciting. I'm excited for that. Um, what else did they have here? Da, 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 da. Uh, Advanced Wars, I'm still hyped for that. Uh, I'm not good at strategy games, but I will support uh, Nintendo's IP that are not Mario and Zelda. So there we go. <laughs> I bought Famicom Detective Club. I played half of the first one and I stopped. <laughs> uh, not because I don't like visual novels. I love visual novels, but I didn't, I don't like the flow of Famicom Detective Club where it's like, you basically just go to every single person asking every single question, hope like in unlocking more info that way. It, I think it drags on and it's very repetitive. The story's good though. I just, it wasn't enough to keep me going, right? I still recommend the games if you're interested in them, though. Uh, I bought both of them because I will gladly support classic IP coming back, um, depending on the IP. Uh, visual novels I know I'm a fan of, and RPGs I know I'm a fan of, so I'll support stuff like Advance Wars, even if I'm bad at tactical RPGs, but it is what it is. So I'm super pumped for that. Uh, what, what else was on the list? Uh, the Klonoa games, like, never played them. Uh, frankly, not much interest in them, but they, uh, they look cool. They look good. Uh, it's with the first game, at least it's very clear. They took some of the level assets from the Wii game and just kind of like saturated them to be super bright and colorful, uh, which I think works a lot better for Klonoa than the Wii game. Cause if you look at screenshots of the Wii game, it's much more like not muted cause it's still very colorful, but like if you, there's a side-by-side -side screenshot out there somewhere, on Twitter, and it just, like, it, it's night and day. Like, one of them clearly fits better than the other one does. Um, but yeah, I'm glad is coming back, and it's, like, the two big games, right? And it's on everything. It's on Xbox, it's on PlayStation, it's on Switch, it's on PC. And Bandai Namco is actually advertising the fucking thing, which is nice. How many employees does Bandai Namco have, by the way? They work on, like, 40 games every, every year. It's wild to me. Uh, Live Alive. Oh my god. Love what I see of Live Alive. Uh, not because... I will be real. I hate... I hate so much the Octopath HD 2D art style because I hate the bloom. The bloom is just so intense. But... <laughs> asterisk. But... They toned it down after Octopath Traveler. And so their games actually look way better. Uh, so I am, and I saw a video of uh, the region locked digital you know, gaming video of Live Alive um, talking about like the SNES version of the game that's already exists, right? And it's fan translated already. And I was going to play it too on stream, uh, twitch.tv slash Uh But I never got around to it. But then they announce, oh, hey, by the way, we're just making a super pretty version with voice acting. And I'm like, well, shit, <laughs> I got to pick that up now. Uh, I've seen very few, but I've seen a couple of people like, eh, wait, it's $60. And I'm like, here's why this is worth $60. And Link's Awakening wasn't $60 or shouldn't have been $60. Link's Awakening is like a tiny Game Boy game. It is bite sized. And I'm not saying length of a game should matter, but like, the fact they added nothing to it, right? Live Alive, they're adding voice acting and bright, like overhauled visuals that are still like more reminiscent of the art style, and like obviously quality of life changes. Like this isn't just a, you know, it's not the same game but prettier. It's the same game but with more to it, and it's never been released outside of Japan, so they had to localize it, right? The for the first time. Link's Awakening was almost shot for shot the same exact game. So th I think that's that's where it's a little different is, you know, Live Alive is adding stuff. And I know Link's Awakening has the dungeon thing. The dungeon thing sucks. No one likes the dungeon thing. Don't, don't bring up the dungeon thing. Everyone brings up the dungeon thing. 
it they're like oh but it did add no it didn't it was garbage <laughs> and it kind of ruined the vibe anyway because dompe shouldn't have been in the game but whatever it is what it is Link's awakening whole thing is that it didn't have series staples <laughs> but yet you, you whatever i'm going on about nothing <laughs> ignore me uh, it's almost as if i'm rambling um and then front mission oh my god like i the second they said wanzers i was like wait a fucking second i was just watching like two or three days ago like before the direct uh matt mcmuscle's uh video on left alive left alive which was a front mission like spinoff uh well they they did a poor job conveying that because they never once mentioned front mission from the trailers i saw um or you know whatever but apparently that game was trash and everyone was like well this was our one chance to get front mission back but i i guess forever entertainment square worked something out and now we're getting front mission one and two uh remade uh which is nice I, I might try them. I, I think, when does the first one come out? They said it comes out in, like, summer, right? I pick it up, depending on what's out, right? Uh, Kirby looks fuck. Oh, my God. I love Kirby. Uh, well, now I love Kirby. This Kirby, specifically. The only Kirby games I've ever liked are, like, Air Ride and 64, for the most part. I've played Superstar through a couple times. And, you know, it's fine. I like it. But, like, 64 and Air Ride are, like buy games like those are the ones i'm into so like when i see kirby doing something totally different totally new fresh it's like beautiful and fun to look at like right like i know people are like oh visuals don't matter in a game they do matter stop you're crazy you're actually crazy no one would play splatoon if it still looked like that shitty tofu block demo no one would play it half of splatoon's charm is the visuals, the vibe, the energy that the visuals provide. So visuals do matter and you're nuts otherwise. That's like a, an objective fact. Visuals do matter to a degree. I'm not saying it's 100% like the game looks bad, don't play it. Bleh. But the fact Kirby looks great and plays great, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like no one, no one's looking at Kirby and being like, uh, it, like if it was just a pretty game and wasn't fun, then whatever. But like, but like if it's fun to play but if it's boring to look at what well, i'm not gonna have fun like there's no vibe to it it's like the new super mario bros games like the like yeah they have great level design and stuff but well maybe not two but you know like the first game especially the first game and then we and then i hear you has great level design but like visually those are bland right but kirby is just like no nah, i'm pretty as hell i'm running smooth and I look fun to play. And I'm like, hell yeah. And he ain't a fucking car. Kirby's a car. Carby. I love Carby. He looks great. He looks kind of cursed. Not going to lie. He looks a little bit cursed. But it's in like a funny way and not like the, oh my God, delete this way. Um, and then they, No Man's Sky for Switch. I don't want anyone to tell me Kingdom Hearts can't run on Switch. I don't want anyone to tell me Kingdom Hearts couldn't run on Switch. Shut up. They got No Man's Sky to work. No Man's Sky looks like shit, but it's running on Switch. <laughs> and I hear that game's better. I hear No Man's Sky is way better. They patched it and blah, blah, blah. But uh, I'm not really interested. It's one of those, like, make your own fun kind of game, right? Uh, and then... Uh, what else caught my eye? Um, what else can I ramble about? Oh, Earthbound. Yep. Beginnings one uh for uh beginnings for NES and Earthbound for Super Nintendo. God, I'm so love Earthbound. Play beginnings. I know people like to go out there and be like, oh, beginnings is rough. It's uh, old game. Don't don't play that one first. Play that one first. But like if you're not into it, skip to Earthbound. But, like, it's the first game in the series. So play that one first. You got both. Just play both. Nothing wrong with both. Both of these nuts. Ugh. But, but yeah. Uh, play Earthbound Beginnings. Use save states. Use a guide. Doesn't matter. Just in, enjoy 
beginnings because that's the start of the story. Granted, it doesn't offer a ton in like lore or anything, but it's an important part of the series. And then Earthbound is great. It is the second best one in the series. <laughs> and the third best, the first best one ain't out in America or anywhere that isn't Japan. So, you know, it is what it is, though. But I'm excited for those games. Uh, I've seen a, co a couple of my friends playing Beginnings, a couple of my friends playing Earthbound, and I'm super happy to see it because they're both great. I think they're both great. Uh, obviously, one's more dated than the other, but they're fun. So it is what it is. Splatoon 3 is not doing anything for me, so I'm not I'm not into that. Like, I don't know, I just every time I see it, I'm like, great. Splatoon. Yep. Looks like Splatoon. <laughs> like, I don't know if the charm of Splatoon is worn off on me by now, but 3 looks fun. I hope people like it. Uh, I don't see myself picking it up, but, you know, looks cool. Uh, and then I guess the last big thing that really got me was uh, Xenoblade 3. Which I'm like super pumped for that because they're very clearly getting a middle ground between two and one in terms of art style. Like I I don't I don't want to harp on it too long, but I I think two's designs are pretty woof uh, in a in a bad way. Uh, I I like the much more grounded approach of one's art style, and I think. I think three is a good middle ground, <laughs> like, but it's leaning more towards one than it is two. Like, I don't see any giant booby ladies anywhere. And oh, but Rob, those were so far. If you be shush, shush, you get what I mean. You get what I mean. <laughs> I don't like any of that. It's weird and distracting in my games. <laughs> like, so I'm just I'm glad Xenoblade Three looks cool. I can't wait to see gameplay though. Uh, and, like, God, the fact that, like, it has those large open vistas and they look great. And, like, because, like, 2, I'm not going to dig on 2 forever. 2 visually is, like, held together by dreams. Like, <laughs> bubble bubblegum and dreams is what holds that game together in terms of visuals. And, like, they've, they, they made 2. And they were, like, very clearly rushed on that game because, like, they had to get it out, right? Like, even the voice acting, they said they did it in chronological order just to make sure, like, okay, we have to do it as it goes. Like, just do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, right? But, uh, and then, you know, then then they made definitive edition of the first game, which you should play. That's the one you should play. Uh, they made definitive edition, and that was tight. Uh, but that was, again them to also like to bring the original game back but also just work more on the switch right get more used to hardware right and then xenoblade 3 is like here's the culmination of our efforts right so i'm so happy for this game it looks so good i'm so ready for it and it looks looks good overall i can't wait to uh to play it it comes out what like september yeah, it comes out like September. Dude, that game, the game is like, what, seven months away? Not even? Yeah, it's like seven months, literally. Just seven months. We're going to play it in less than a half a year. Or just above half a year. Whatever. Shut up. Leave me alone. Uh, oh, someone's listening to a video upstairs. I really hope they don't walk down here with that. But yeah, that was really like the only thing in the direct that like caught my eye for the most part. Um, I know they had like Fire Emblem and stuff like that, but I'm not. I'm not interested. I didn't like Three Houses, and I don't like the idea of... Oh, I guess I shouldn't exaggerate. I like the idea of what, like... This is essentially what Age of Calamity was for Zelda. This is that for Three Houses. I don't really like that. Uh, I like the idea, but they did a lot of different things in Age of Calamity that I'm not a fan of. Strikers I liked because it was just a sequel and there was no twist to it, right? Age of Calamity has a twist to it. That's all I'm going to say about it. So I don't like the twist. <laughs> and I guarantee they're going to do that here. And the reason why the Nintendo IPs have a twist to it is because they don't want to have to write, they don't want to have to associate with it later if they don't have to. Uh, because this game's going to come out and then Nintendo's never going to talk about it. 
just like with Age of Calamity, just like with Fire Emblem Warriors, just like with the original uh, like Hyrule Warriors and the 3DS version, they are not going to want to talk about this game if they don't have to. Uh, Nintendo does that with all their like spin-off-y like, games, like the Oracle games made by Capcom. So we don't talk about those. <laughs> like Minish Cap, we don't talk about it. Right? It's like totally not the vibe of Nintendo. They're they're this game's gonna come out and it's probably gonna get DLC, but they're never gonna talk about it. Like it's good, it's gonna be dead. Not dead, but like to Nintendo, it might as well be. Um, let's talk about something else. So this week, uh, I got a random package in the mail. Didn't know where it was from. Uh, but I thought I could show it off here. It was from Japan. It is... <laughs> it's a Tom and Jerry, like, figure... <laughs> Based on, like, one of the memes where he, like... <laughs> like, he, like, eats a brick or a, a cube of cheese or something like that. And he's, like... <laughs> he walks over the wall. He's like, yeah, what the fuck? And, like... <laughs> So I guess I bought this at some point. I don't remember. I, I looked online and I bought it like over a year ago. I to to put it into perspective, I've had two jobs since <laughs> like um, totally different time. But yeah. Uh what what else happened recently? Um Oh, uh, my girlfriend and I, uh, hi Jess, um, uh, we watched uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, and uh, I really like the show. It's very cute, it's very cuddly, and it has some stuff in it that I know people aren't like a hundo on, and I, that's fair, I get it. I'm not going to say, you know, it's a perfect show, it's not. But I love, like, the, it has, like, cozy, heartfelt moments. I, th I think overall, like, the parts that would bother most people, I feel like, are so not part of the whole experience. Like, they're so detached from the full experience that I feel like, you know, if you want to go in and, you know, just have, like, a cozy, heartfelt vibe, that's the show for it. And it has a season two. I'm just waiting for that to go on Blu-ray so I can buy that. <laughs> Um, because I'm on Blu-rays, they usually like clean stuff up, and it that's the thing with games and stuff. I don't care if it's digital or physical media, but with anime, like the easiest way to consume anime in super high quality is to buy it because it you can't really buy anime digitally like you can. I mean, you can, but like it's not. I don't want to click on a file, you know. Like I, I like having with with anime. I like having a disc, and I just you know I. I go right, and uh, it's it's nice. I I like physical Blu-rays have a totally different vibe than cough cough other means. So, like if if I can buy it and I have the money for it, I will. But you know, uh, I think the next show we're gonna watch spoilers, sweetheart. Sorry. Um, no, nope. almost dropped it. Okay, we're okay. Uh, the next show we're gonna watch. Boop. Oh, there we go. It's called uh, Konosuba. Oh, no, 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 no. There we go. It's called Konosuba, God's Blessing on This Wonderful World. And the whole thing about this show is that it's... Okay, so there's a guy who dies, like, super early in life. Uh, and he gets sent to, like, an RPG world. But, like... And so the whole thing is, like, a like a comedy where like everyone in this world is a like a complete asshole to each other. Like no one is a good person. <laughs> like the main character, he's like a thief, but he's also like really like scummy. <laughs> like he's always out to like make money and just want to be the laziest person he possibly can. And then uh the priestess, like their healer, is a is like a egotistical alcoholic. <laughs> And like, and their mage, she can cast one spell, and it's like an explosion spell that completely wipes her of her like physical energy. So she casts it and then just face plants every time. It's so funny. Uh, but oh, 
over overall, it's it's also a good show, and it's only like ten episodes, so like you could marathon it in like like an afternoon or an evening. It's pretty good. Uh, and then there is a season two and a movie, all of which are in English. But the movie I don't think has been released yet. They they were planning the movie like like two years ago. They've said the movie's done. It just Crunchyroll hasn't released it yet. You know what? I'm kind of curious. Can I? Uh, oh no. Stuba movie dub. Uh, yeah, they they announced it. Uh, let's see here. The official Konosuba ready. Um. English dub of the movie will come in. Uh, it's being delayed due to COVID-19. The dub came out. Oh, okay. The dub did come out. Okay, it's on Crunchyroll. Is there a Blu-ray release? Oh, and, oh, and the cast is back. Oh, sweet. Okay. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> We'd love to see it. All right. The mo and the movie's good, too, but it takes place after season two. So I went and saw that in theaters when it came out, and I was super, super jazzed. I love that. Okay, so there we go. Um, I guess I got my answer. So I'm not too upset about that. It's out. Um, but yeah, seasons one and two I have on Blu-ray, and I'm super pumped for that. In general, I have a lot of anime on Blu-ray. You know what? Hang on. Do I have a couple? No, I, I moved them. I got a couple there. In the other room. I don't want to go grab them. It's, it's too far away, and I'm not going to edit it. So, because I'm too lazy. <laughs> Wait right there. Okay, okay. I'm back. I'm back. I grabbed a couple of things. I grabbed a couple DVDs while I was up there. Uh, what's what's the first one? You know what? Let's stick to the comedy thing. So this, I don't think this show can be bought anymore legally. But this is Azumanga Dayo. So the whole point of this is that it's it's about like a nine-year-old girl who becomes or not becomes she just is a genius and her whole thing is uh she starts going to high school now comedy ensues it's a skit show so it's just a series of like goofs and gags but there's like a lot of heartfelt moments in it right <clears throat> super funny if like how many episodes is it? Like 26? God, I like ran over there. I'm like exhausted right now. Um. Oh wait, this has a reversible cover? No shit. No. Huh? Yo, it is reversible. It's not a good cover though. Because they put the different characters on. Okay, whatever. Stop making bad reversible covers, please. Thank you. Really don't like the... But yeah, you can only get this on DVD, as far as I know. Uh, and even then, I don't think it's in... I don't think it's in circulation anymore. Th this was part of the Selects line. This was like five bucks when I bought it. But that was because they wanted to get rid of inventory, I think, right? So, um... But yeah, super funny, super charming. I would, I'd love to show that to people. Uh, this one, this one is ghost stories. So this is not one for. Uh, let's just say it has a lot of early two thousands edgy humor, and it and it says a lot of not okay things. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is definitely not the show to watch. For like the faint of heart. So the original show was kind of meant to be like a supernatural kids ghost story anthology. Um, but in Japan, the show did like super poor. Like it was not well received. No one watched it. It was bad. But when the licensor for ADV Films, when they got a hold of the license, because it was cheap, they were like, well, hey, Japanese people who own this, like, can we... We just do what we want with it, and the Japanese are like, "Yeah, well, whatever." The show's worth nothing to us. It didn't, it didn't make any real 
you know, it didn't move the needle or anything, right? So they're like, okay. So they turned it into like a super raunchy comedy where all the characters just say, like, it, for the most part, I think the only stipulation was that they had to keep the character, like the ghosts that are in the show, their stories had to stay the same, like generally, but they could kind of just do whatever they want otherwise. So all the characters say really awful things all the time. It's very bad. It's like I said, it's super early 2000s raunchy humor. So if that doesn't appeal to you, don't watch it. <laughs> but it's, it's super funny. Like, Definitely, I, d I don't know if it's on any streaming platforms, the dub specifically, but if you can get a copy of Ghost Stories, the dub specifically, it's, I think it's pretty fun, and I think it's very much worth it. Um, I remember, like, I watched a couple episodes of it a long time ago, like 15 years ago, and then just like two or three years ago, I watched it with my anime group, and we, we died from, like, just because that's the thing we don't find any of the raunchiness itself funny it's the absurdity of how what the fuck they got and the first couple episodes are kind of meh but then it just every episode it somehow tops itself with how just kind of awful <laughs> kind of awful it is but it's very funny and it's a very good time so highly recommend that uh th now i can move on to the actual blu-rays i wanted to show off so this is the one uh Right before Dragon Maiden, my girlfriend and I watched. Uh, this is a Zombieland Saga. So, Zombieland Saga is about uh, minor spoilers for episode one. Uh, a girl who like wants to become an idol, so she like fills out an application, puts it in an envelope, and like she leaves to go like deliver it or whatever. Gets hit by a car and dies, and then she wakes up sometime later, and she's a zombie along with a bunch of other girls. And they, like, have to become part of an idol group now to save the Saga Prefecture of Japan. Uh, it It's like, oh my god, what kind of premise is this? It's comedy. But it's, like, it's very heartfelt. It's very, like, there's, and there's, like, a cool mystery to everything. And, like, the twist is super cool. And I hope, I hope anyone, if anyone watching checks it out, it has to be specifically to find out why this is all going down or like what started this right like the in universe right so like i highly recommend checking it out um the dub on blu-ray has because there's music it's it's an idol group right but all the songs are dubbed on the blue which is super cool they like brought the whole cast back to sing their parts and a lot of them have like theater backgrounds and stuff like that. So it all checks out. Right. And it's super good. Subbed or dubbed. Check it out. Cause it's a good time. Uh, episode eight is probably my favorite episode with uh, the reveal episode being the second. Um, what else do I have? Okay. You know what? Let's go. This was one of the first anime I saw. So the first one I like really got into that wasn't uh, Dragon Ball or Pokemon or something like that, it was uh, Clannad. But soon after was a show called, here, hang on, can I get this to function? Nope. Okay, too blurry. Uh, oh, Please Teacher. There we go. And you, Please Teacher. So the whole thing is about uh, a student who goes through these, these sort of episodes where like he blacks out he just stops like essentially drops into a like mini comas more or less right and so eventually he meets this uh like an alien woman who ends up becoming his teacher or whatever and and then the whole thing is just like shenanigans ensue like having to keep their secrets and stuff like that right i think it's a really cute sweet show and it has a sequel series called please twins and i think please twins is good too uh and then later it got a spiritual successor uh and i oh my god what is the name of the spiritual successor because the spiritual successor is written by the same person and i love the spiritual successor as well uh here you know what it's like because it's it's all a trilogy basically you watch please teacher please twins and then the sequel 
like pseudo sequel series. Uh, come on, come on, come on. I can find it. It's around here somewhere. Uh, just be aware, uh, Please Teacher also has a movie. D the movie is, you don't have to. It's not the movie. Uh, d d there, there's an anime with like 12 episodes. That's the one you want. Okay, there we go. I found it. The sequel series is called Waiting in the Summer. That's the name. Waiting in the Summer. That's the third one. So please, teacher, please, twins, waiting in the summer. That You have to w watch them all and watch them dubbed. So the dubbed is good. Uh, the dub includes, like, oh, doesn't it have, like, they don't say the cast on here, do they? Yeah, they don't say the cast on here. That's a bummer. Uh, but it has, like, Michelle Ruff, who's known for, uh, like, who did she uh, she voices Yukari from Persona 3. Uh, it has uh, David Wittenberg, who is Kefka from the Dissidia games, the Dissidia Final Fantasy games. Uh, it has Kirk Thornton, who's Shadow the Hedgehog now. Um, like, so there's there's names attached to this, you know? It's like super cool to see. This is one of their earlier works. Uh, highly recommend it. And then the last one I wanted to show off, uh, this one is super cute, and because I figured, you know, it's close to Valentine's Day. This is called My Love Story. Oh, no, don't don't blur it out. Yeah, My Love Story. So the whole point of this show is that uh, there's like a big hulking dude uh, in high school who is kind of like, he's not an outcast by any means, but like he's, you know, he's the, uh, he's the big, heavy, sweetheart kind of guy, but like he's jealous of kind of jealous of his best friend who is like the hot cool like mellow guy um and he wishes he could find love like him and the first couple episodes are basically the big dude saves a girl and then like he thinks the girl loves the best friend and, you know it but it's only it's all it's one of those love triangles for three episodes and then the whole series i kid you not the whole series this is not a spoiler the entire series is about the big dude and this girl he saved building a legitimate romance together. They are dating. As of episode three, they're like, they're in love and they're dating. And the rest of the show is them like learning how to have a stealthy, stable, like uh, stable, healthy relationship. Thank you. That's thank you, brain. Uh, and it's super like you would think like, oh, wait, well, there's no drama. There's no plot. That's the best part. <laughs> there is none. Like, it's it's them just dealing with life. And, like, you know, like, like th there's a moment, like, he, he wants to go on a date with her, but, like, he wants to help his friend out who's, like, just going through a hard time and stuff like that. And it's, like, it's such, like, a nothing thing, but the characters are so nice and they're so sweet. You, like, you, you don't care. You're just, you like the characters. You like spending time with them. It's so cozy. It's such a good show. Uh... I like the dub version of it. Uh, the by the way, the only reason I really like watch dubs, not because I don't enjoy the acting. I love the acting. I think the acting's always great. But uh, I have reading comprehension issues, so reading subtitles is incredibly difficult for me. Uh, for example, uh, my anime group and I have been watching Odd Taxi over the past couple weeks, um, and Odd Taxi is good, but like it's incredibly difficult for me to keep up with everything. Like I. I almost feel like I have to ask for recaps on like what we were just talking about. Like, like I, I, I piece things together, but I'm like just barely on the edge of not understanding. <laughs> Sucks. Uh, there's one character who like speaks in rhymes, like he raps everything he says. And like that, that's funny, but, but sometimes he goes too quick and I don't, I like, I, there, there was one episode specifically I was like in the text chat while we were watching and the guy is like, he starts rapping or whatever and he goes too quickly. And I'm just like, yep, lost me. Yep. Just let me know what he says when you're done. <laughs> like, I just had to check out. I couldn't handle it. But, but yeah, I, I like, so a lot of the time I, I only watch things when they're dubbed. It's very rare that I go for anything that's subtitle only. And that's just because it's harder for me to understand. Like, I can't tell you how ecstatic I was when they announced that Judgment and then Future uh, 
uh, RGG Studio games would have dubs. I am so happy they do because that made it easier for me to enjoy Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is my it's like tied for my favorite game in the series because I love the gameplay and the energy of Yakuza Zero, but the comedy and the acting of Like a Dragon and it's an RPG. Like I love RPGs that like totally like it's neck and neck for which one's my favorite, but I love them both. And I'm so happy that like future games are doing dub stuff. I, I know Lost Judgment, they were going like Lost Judgment. They, it was a worldwide release and they had a dub and it was lip synced too. And, you know, it didn't need to be on PS5, cough, cough, go to Tsushima. But like, I'm so happy that, uh, that it, it, it's, it just, God, when shit gets dubbed, I just, fucking love <laughs> fucking love it dude it makes it easier for me to enjoy and that and i just I, I i really need that sometimes you know um but uh but yeah you know what i think i think that's a good end of the episode right like I'll, I'll cut out i'll cut out that part where i walked away for you know five seconds or whatever it probably wasn't five seconds it was probably more like a minute and i don't want to make you sit through all that so i cut that but anyway uh, thank you for listening to my rambles, and hopefully I get that Nintendo video done. So, <laughs> anyway, later, y'all.